Elon Musk has very recently recommended disc replacement surgery for severe neck or back pain. This has generated a lot of controversy and discussion in the healthcare community. I'm Anthony Gosh, a consultant spinal neurosurgeon and founder of Spine MDT. Keep watching this video, I'm going to explain what a disc replacement is and some of the scenarios in which Elon Musk's point might be valid. Firstly, let's quickly look at the anatomy of the spine here on this miniature model. Um, the spine starts from the pelvis and works its way all the way up to the skull. It's made up of a stack of bones. It's divided into cervical, which is the neck area of your spine, the thoracic spine, which is the bit that's enclosed in your rib cage, and then the lumbar spine lower down. And then within the pelvis, you have the sacral spine deep into the pelvis, which is all fused and joined together, and then the tailbone, the coccyx. Let's zoom into the lumbar spine. So here we have a closer look at the vertebral the vertebrae so they're made up of a vertebral body this cylindrical block of bone with an arch of bone attached to the back of it so this is the front here this is the back and then each bone is separated by a disc which is a sort of soft cushion a shock absorber and that's how the bodies are joined together and at the back of the spine they're joined together by these two joints here called facet joints and between these three joints the disc the two facets we can get a little bit of motion at each segment of the spine not a lot just a little bit of angulation lateral flexion side to side and a tiny bit of rotation at each level now let's have a look at the cervical spine the neck part of the spine it's very similar but each bone is very is much smaller so these are the vertebral bodies with the discs in between there's some arteries that run inside the uh, housing of the spine um, and this is the back of the spine here and the skull joined on at the top. This segment of the spine tends to be a lot more mobile than the lumbar spine and it houses and protects the spinal cord, this yellow structure here that runs all the way through. So the arch on the back of the spine, this is the, the back here, this is the front, you create a tunnel down the middle known as the spinal canal and that's where I said the spinal cord runs through. That comes to an end at just after the junction of the thoracic and the lumbar spine, the lower part of the spine. And again, you've got a canal here as well, but in this segment of the spine, in this sac, it's more a sac of nerves rather than the spinal cord. And throughout your spine, at each segment, there is an opening either side where a nerve leaves the spine. In the lumbar spine, these nerves innervate the muscles of your legs. In the cervical spine, the neck area, they innervate the muscles of the shoulder and the arm. But those nerves also innervate the muscles of the arm and give sensation to the hand uh, and the skin of the arm. So each segment has three joints, the disc and the two facets. The disc itself is made of a very squishy type of material and its role is more of a shock absorber. It allows a little bit of angulation forwards and backwards, sideways angulation and a little bit of rotation, nothing more. It's actually a relatively uh, stiff segment. So when you operate on these to take them out and decompress a nerve, um, a di what a re disc replacement is, you, you, you take it out completely and in its place you put a device which allows a little bit of that movement. And there are different devices that can replicate that movement in different ways. So quite a few years ago, Elon Musk was training in sumo wrestling, apparently managed to throw... Um, world wrestling, the sumo wrestling champion and in the process ruptured a disc in his neck he underwent some form of surgery at that point possibly the disc replacement first on we don't quite know allegedly some bony spurs were left behind and then thereafter he underwent the disc replacement surgery where they underwent disc replacement first and that was revised i'm not quite sure but that's what happened to him and eventually he had a very good result so if you rupture one of these discs in the neck, it can cause a lot of pain. If it ruptures backwards, it can pinch, this is the front of the spine, it can pinch one of these nerves coming out and give you severe pain down the arm. And if it goes all the way back in the midline, it can pinch the spinal cord and cause paralysis, weakness of the arms and legs. I'm not quite sure how, um, what sort of symptoms Elon Musk had at the time, but he had quite severe neck pain, it seems, possibly arm pain. Um, we don't quite know. A standard operation is, is done that is done therefore if, it, if conservative measures fail is to remove that disc to protect the spinal cord and the nerve. That's the primary reason usually to operate in the neck. Commonly what a lot of us do is then put a breeze block in that space to allow the segment to fuse up um, over time and alleviate the neck pain. But if all the other discs in your spine are relatively healthy, you're young and that's the only segment where there's damage, 
and you've proven that's the cause of the pain or there is indeed nerve compression that you want to untrap, then yes, a disc replacement is um, a reasonable option. The reason that came about is if you fuse a segment of the spine, the theory is the adjacent segments have to work harder or move further to make up for the lack of motion at the segment that you fused up. And therefore you can get what is known as adjacent level disease, i.e. disc bulges, disc wear and tear at the levels adjacent and possibly nerve compression. And that's why the disc replacement idea um, tries to preserve the motion there when you remove the disc um, to try and prevent that. However, a trial published by our colleagues in the Netherlands compared disc replacement with disc fusion and just taking the disc out, and they did not find a superior result um, with replacing the disc versus fusing it, and that's five-year data. So replacing the disc in the neck in that context doesn't necessarily yield bad results. It's just as good results, but it's a bit more work intensive. And what that trial has shown is we can just stick to the routine operation of an anterior discectomy infusion and achieve just as good results. From what I can see looking on the internet, it doesn't look like he's had an operation in the lumbar spine, but I think this tweet may have been interpreted that way. And a lot of the discussion amongst the healthcare community was about lumbar disc replacement for back pain. This is where it gets a lot more complicated. There are multiple different causes of back pain and most of the time there's nothing severe uh, underlying that's going on. The trouble with the ruptured disc problem is that if I were to take patients of above the age of 40 and above um, who have never experienced back pain ever and you scan their spines, a good number of these people are going to have ruptured or worn out discs. So that in itself isn't necessarily an abnormality. A lot of patients who have back pain have somehow ended up having um, an MRI scan. The, the report has been read as having degenerate discs or dark or um, torn discs. And obviously this generates anxiety, but that doesn't mean that's the source of your pain because we know these are fairly normal findings above the age of 40. So if someone's going to have surgery for that, we have to be 100% sure that that is the cause of the pain. So in an absolute minority of patients with back pain and a ruptured disc, a minority of that group of patients is the ruptured disc the actual cause of the pain. To determine that is part of the clinical assessment and the way the, way the spine moves. And I've had a discussion with Stuart McGill, uh, known as the back mechanic, a famous kinesiologist from Canada who's done extensive research on this, and that's in a separate video. And then there are various radiological tests you can look at, so the sequences of the MRI with a SPECT CT, but that's to confirm your diagnosis, which is mostly coming from the clinical history and examination. So to summarise, a minority of patients with back pain will have back pain because of a disc or generated by a disc. And now, even further than that, a minority of those patients um, will actually need any surgery. And both Stuart McGill and recently Peter O'Sullivan, who I interviewed on my YouTube channel, there's a link below, have come up with methods to help you avoid that kind of surgery altogether. So if you have fallen into that absolute minority category of patients whose back pain, not sciatica, just back pain, is generated by a ruptured disc, and then you further fall into the further minority of patients and that back pain has not improved with some of the more conservative measures, cognitive functional therapy described by Peter O'Sullivan or some of the more strengthening exercises uh, described by McGill, then surgery may be an option. Um, and that, what I've carried out in the past in that subgroup of patients is simply fusing that segment of the lumbar spine where that disc is removed a breeze blocker cage is placed in its place and some screws are placed to kind of lock it all together until it fuses. Surgeons have tried replacing the disc itself for the same reasons we've uh, described in the neck. And often with these publications, people will publish a series of patients that they've done and have had relatively um, good results rather than a comparative study. One of the problems with replacing the disc and preserving uh, the motion is that often if you've got a, a collapsed disc here the motion there can cause wear and tear of these joints here the facets and they then start to generate pain so if you preserve the motion with a disc you can still generate the motion of the facet joint which is why I've always steered to fusing that segment in that minority of patients so here's where that leaves us now we've got to that absolute minority of patients that may benefit from from a fusion 
And of those patients, some of them will just have the disc degeneration that's causing the pain that we've proven, but normal sized facet joints on their scans. That's the subgroup of patients that may benefit from a disc replacement rather than a fusion. So you can see if we've gone through that filter, we're talking about a very, very small uh, minority. There have been some more recent um, long-term data results of um, disc replacement that have shown reasonable results. Now there's newer devices which go in and not only replace the disc, but also replace the facet. So that can help in a slightly num but bigger number of patients where that will benefit from fusion. But you can see where I'm going with this. Overall, it's an absolute tiny minority of patients that benefit with surgery for back pain. I'm not talking about leg pain or spinal cord compression or arm or leg weakness. This is purely just uh, back pain. The second part of his tweet says that if you're going to have a disc replacement, or on the side of the ones that have limited movement. And that I do actually agree with. If we take healthy discs, they actually are quite a rigid, stiff uh, structure. They don't move very much. They just allow a little bit of angulation and a tiny, tiny bit of rotation, uh, but not that much. It's not like a knee joint, which bends quite a lot. So if it, if it was like that, can you imagine the amount of musculature you would need just to maintain that upright posture? And if you rupture a disc, suddenly that segment can become a bit more mobile when you're applying that turning force and everything gets transmitted through it. So if a disc replacement is going to be used, I would also pick one that has a very limited range of movement. So I hope you found that video helpful. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps patients suffering with back pain or spine disease find useful information that I try and post on this channel uh, weekly. Our goal at the Spine MDT is to try and find the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting result with our big network of spine care practitioners led and overseen by a spine surgeon. You can visit spinemdt.com to find out more information and also about our one-stop spine clinic.